What's up, guys? Welcome into the Wolverine.com recruiting show. We are back with Zach Libby for the first time in a few weeks. Zach's been dealing with an injured toe, so he's been <laughs> out of commission. Um, our producer, Megan, is back from vacation as well, so we should be full go for the show today. I know you guys hated the replacement producer uh, and we're chanting for Megan's return. So she is back and Zach is back. So we're all ready to roll. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Michigan's first official visit weekend in June. Three official visitors will recap where things sit with all of them. Uh, but before we do, I want to invite you guys to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That is completely free um i believe we're at like twenty one thousand likes or something so get us to twenty two thousand likes like us subscribe us subscribe to us it is completely free and as always subscribe to the wolverine.com right now 29.99 gets you access for six months so make sure to take advantage of that deal over at the wolverine.com uh, also, quick reminder, this is the Super Chat show, so no questions in the chat box. You can leave positive comments like Antoine Johnson, but if you do want your questions answered tonight, you will have to leave a Super Chat or wait for tomorrow's Wednesday show where I will be back to answer all of your questions. But let's go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, the biggest storyline coming out of this official visit weekend i feel like is brian robinson on 300 edge out of ohio just because there are a lot of moving parts in that recruitment he's been a long time michigan lean but has yet to pull the trigger michigan is still the leader on the on three prediction machine but that percentage has gone down there have been some new predictions in for Kentucky, as things stand today, um, I would probably give a slight edge to Kentucky. I wouldn't necessarily put Brian Robinson in my projected recruiting class. There are some other talented edges coming in. You had Jacob Smith come in this weekend, who we'll talk about. We'll have uh, Dominic Nichols coming up here in our next segment uh, in regards to guys we talk about. Uh, Devin Baxter is out there. Elias Rudolph is out there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's still some more names on the edge board, and those spots could fill up quickly. Um, I'm just not sure Brian ends up in this class coming out of the weekend. Like I said, it's it's been kind of a weird situation with a lot of moving parts. But, uh, Zach, I know you had a conversation with Brian after his official visit and you're putting up that story tomorrow, what was kind of your takeaway, at least from Brian's side of, uh, you know, side of things? I mean, I think everyone knows how smart he is and intelligent he is. And on the official visit, like he understands what the situation is regarding the edge room. Like he knows all the guys that Michigan is going targeting at that group. And the coaches have stayed firm on the fact that, they've told him they're going to take four edge rushers now combination of whoever, but it's it, the reason why we're saying like moving parts. I think it's just who knows how long Brian waits out, right? Like the others might try to commit others might get their commitment accepted. And, you know, I think there's just, they're still waiting out the process. They're still staying patient. Um, they still have two more, no, one more official visit to Kentucky. Um, Penn State, he actually canceled um, for next week. So it's, I, I, they, 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 going out of the conversation that I had, I still think Michigan is the leader and others have to catch up. It's just a matter of whether or not there's room for Brian at the end of the day. Yeah, and I, I don't necessarily know. Eh, I'm trying to word this carefully. I think the other guys coming in, I think Michigan might actually be okay with Brian taking his time and officially visiting Kentucky. 
because Michigan is high on a lot of these edge guys coming in. Devin Baxter has some of the biggest upside in the class. Dominic Nichols is a very similar type of prospect. Elias Rudolph is another high upside guy. Darian Mayo is the best of the bunch, no question. He's a take no matter what. So with those guys coming in after Brian, I think Michigan's fine. I think Michigan's okay if Brian doesn't end up in the class. Uh, is there a situation where Brian does end up in the class? Definitely. Uh, you know, there could be situations where over the next couple of weeks, guys, you know, the dominoes don't fall as expected. You know, you could have Devin Baxter say, I'm staying closer to home. Uh, you could have Dominic Nichols really fall in love with, with Clemson or someone that's come in pretty late. Uh, you could not land Darian Mayo. So the, there's definitely a chance that Brian does end up in the class. But as things stand right now, I would personally give the slight edge to Kentucky um, based on what I've gathered, uh, you know, from talking to those around the program. So, it, again, it's it's a really interesting situation. We keep saying moving parts where we've been really vague with how we've been describing this process. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. I think we'll have to wait out the next couple of weeks and see how things really progress with the other edge targets. I mean, I, I have a prediction in for Dominic Nichols. Libby has a prediction in for Elias Rudolph. Chad Simmons has a prediction in for Darian Mayo. I have a prediction in for Jacob Smith. So, yeah, I mean, all those guys could end up at Michigan. And Brian might not, you know, we'll just have to see how it plays out. Um, I, I, I mean, I still, my prediction for Brian is not changing. I still think Michigan is leading. Um, I still think Michigan is still the leader. Um, but yeah, like you said, moving parts, but I, I am not in a position to change my prediction right now. So we'll see. I haven't, for the record, I haven't changed my prediction either, just because there's no reason to right now we have to kind of just wait and see how that board plays out on a more positive front. Jacob Smith, I feel really good about my prediction there. Um, I've been kind of handling that recruitment. I uh, had a really good interview with him yesterday, which you can find over at the Wolverine. Jacob is obviously the brother of Gerard Smith. And I think it's a really I have a really difficult time seeing Jacob ending up anywhere other than Michigan because he's so close to his brother. I had a great conversation with both their parents and their preference is for the twins to play with each other at the next level. I think it was good that Michigan actually got in, got Jacob in for his own official visit. So Gerard was on the trip with him, but it was an unofficial for him. So Jacob got the full OV experience. Of course, they were together a lot of the visit, but I think having separate OV dates gave Jacob more of an individual outlook on the program. I think he really bought into what Michigan had to say about its edge production. I think the strength and conditioning presentation really moved the needle for him as well. He's really fond of what Ben Herbert has done with guys at Michigan. Um, I think he himself really started to believe in what Michigan does for its guys and how it can benefit him and why it was the right fit for his brother, Gerard. And of course, I also had a chance to talk to Gerard, who has been recruiting Jacob and you know, his pitch has been pretty simple. Why not Michigan? It's a great place to develop uh, not just players in general, but specifically pass rushers. So I think things went really well with Jacob. He is set to visit Kentucky and Nebraska here pretty soon uh, over the next couple of weeks, but is likely to return for an unofficial visit when Gerard makes his own OV. I think Michigan is in a strong position to seal the deal with Jacob. I am definitely more confident in Jacob ending up in the class than I am Brian as things stand right now. But, uh, you know, there is a chance both could end up in the class 
uh, as we talked about earlier. And then I'll, I'll touch on Jordan Ship and Libby, you can add any thoughts on Jacob or Ship. Uh, Jordan Ship, I mean, my thoughts have been kind of the same with Ship. I think Michigan is in a really, really good uh, spot to land the four star wide receiver out of Providence Day. Charlotte, you see NC has the lead on the recruiting prediction machine. But again, I really, really like Michigan's chances here. I've included him in both of my mock classes. I haven't put in a prediction just yet. Both of those in-state schools, NC State and UNC, have been fantastic job recruiting him. Ship isn't just going to follow teammates Channing Goodwin and Jaden Davis to Michigan to make his decision. He was the team captain as a junior. He's his own individual. So I putting in a prediction for Jordan Ship just yet. That doesn't mean the visit didn't go well. I'm told the, the visit went fantastic. He might even come back for an unofficial visit on June 16th. So that's definitely something to watch. But NC State is getting an OV this weekend. Uh, North Carolina is getting an OV on June 23rd. So I really want to see how those two OVs go first before putting in a prediction. There's really no need to put in a prediction before those two visits happen. Uh, but I like where Michigan stands. I just want to see how those last two OVs uh, end up going. So, yeah, that's kind of my my thoughts on ship. Libby, anything you want to add on Jacob Smith or Jordan Ship? I mean, it's rare for twins who are power five bound recruits to – leave each other i mean obviously twin twin siblings have a stronger bond than you know regular brothers sisters um i think gerard's doing a really good job with jacob and i think that's resonating a lot and then with ship i mean nc state and north carolina lost out on shannon goodwin um who committed michigan last month uh ship's teammate at providence day i think more of i think the NC State and the North, it, I think those next couple of official visits are going to be, like you said, we'll know more, but I think they're going to do a really, really solid job in convincing him to play for the hometown school and represent his home state. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not in a situation to place one either. So it's a wait and see situation. We do have a super chat from Michigan football and hockey. And he sends a $5 super chat saying, Bennett Warren, Jordan Ship, Brian Robinson, Jacob Smith, and the UMass cornerback are all about to. So no question, just some positive vibes coming from Michigan football and hockey. I do see some uh, other super chat questions. Uh, I mean, I, not super chat questions. I'm sorry if I confused the producer. I see regular questions. We are not answering regular questions today. It is the Super Chat show. So if you want your question answered, make sure to send a Super Chat like Michigan football and hockey. And if you want to wait, I will be answering questions tomorrow on our Wednesday show. So make sure to join us for that. We do have a 199 Super Chat from Shane Johnson. And he says, if Bennett Warren commits, Project a final offensive line haul and rank. Um, so if Bennett Warren commits, I think that's it. I mean, they, they could be done at five if they don't get Bennett Warren or Michael Uini. If they do add Bennett Warren, obviously he would be the final take um, along the offensive line. So that's how, you know, the class would finish. You know, there are guys out there like Brandon Baker and Jordan Seaton and DeAndre Carter, but they're more so long shots. I think the more realistic guys are Warren and Michael Uini. Warren obviously coming in for his OV this weekend. Um, as far as uh, rank, um, you know, I, if you're talking about overall class, I think Michigan obviously finishes in the top 10 and potentially top five, depending on how the other classes shake out. If you want us to, rank the offensive line commits i you know including warren if warren were to jump in i would probably go uh sprague actually it's andrew sprague as we learned we've been pronouncing it incorrectly this entire time so it's andrew sprague uh blake frazier 
I would probably go Bennett Warren next, but man, he's such a high ceiling, low floor type of guy. Um, Luke Hamilton, Ben Roebuck, and uh, Jake Wernera. So, Zach, anything you want to add? I mean, if they get better Warren, I think that's over. Like six, that's it. I think that they're satisfied with that six. But if they end up with five, I think they're very satisfied as well, considering the current commits are the best as of friends. So um, we'll see. Yeah, you know, adding Bennett Warren or Michael Uini would be the cherry on top. I feel like everybody keeps forgetting Uini. Like he's a top level prospect. I mean, this is a guy that's taking OVs to Bama and Clemson. I mean, he's terrific and he's coming in for an OV on June 16th. So I wouldn't sleep on Michael Uini either. All right, guys, before we move on to our next segment, I want to bring you a message from one of our sponsors uh, on the Tuesday night recruiting show. We'd like to shout out Lewis Jewelers, a long time partner of the Wolverine simple question guys have you taken care of that gift for the special woman in your life if the answer is no then great news Lewis Jewelers can help it's stress-free and easy working with one of their non-commissioned expert trusted advisors finding that perfect diamond so stop by today guys and take care of your wives, mothers, grandmothers, whoever is the special woman in your life and uh, get her a ring from Lewis Jewelers. Lewis Jewelers is your diamond store and so much more since 1921. Visit them at their new location at 300 South Maple Road in Ann Arbor or online at lewisjewelers.com. That's lewisjewelers.com where Ann Arbor gets engaged and the world gets engaged. So again, shout out to Lewis Jewelers. My brother-in-law's wedding is coming up and I referred him to Lewis Jewelers and he uh, has purchased a ring from Lewis Jewelers. So be like him and go to Lewis Jewelers. They also have dog tags, apparently, and other cool things. So maybe get yourself a gift if you don't have a special woman in your life. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's, let's go ahead and uh, back get back to football recruiting. Michigan has a massive official visit weekend coming up. Should be a lot busier than this past weekend where there was only – Three official visitors. And just a reminder, guys, uh, on 300 Safety, Marquise Gallegos was supposed to visit last weekend uh, and canceled his visit. He is no longer on the recruiting board. So that visit weekend shrunk from four to three. This weekend, double-digit visitors will start off with the five stars. Is that Chris Ewald? Oh, it's Chris Ewald Sr. Shout out to him uh, for giving us a shout out. Uh, we are big Chris Ewald Jr. fans, and you too, uh, Chris Sr. Uh, always enjoy our conversations. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about the big OV weekend coming up. Let's start off with the five stars, Justin Scott, Ryan Wingo. Uh, Justin Scott, much talked about defensive lineman out of Chicago, Ryan Wingo out of St. Louis. Zach, I'll let you start off with these two five stars. Does Michigan have a chance with either? I think they should be satisfied that they're getting an official visit like as it is right. Like for, for a while in that winter, let's start with Justin Scott first, like for a while in that winter, like there's speculation as to whether Michigan was able to get him back on campus after the Michigan state game um, last October, but Elston, uh, Jesse Minter, Dylan Roney, um, Jim Harbaugh, um, they all worked really hard um, and really concise to, managed to bring both his mom and Justin on an OV this upcoming weekend. I mean, I think there was a lot of sell, um, especially from his inner circle. I mean, Michigan's education, um, proximity to campus, uh, being able to represent the Chicago area. Plus, Justin has a lot of connections with the players who are on the roster um, who are also from Chicago, like uh, Trey Pierce from this past cycle. But there, there's – there's a lot that still needs to be sold. Um, 
you know, Notre Dame is still in it. They kind of provide the same opportunities as Michigan um, and are an hour and a half away from campus. Um, Miami has literally communicated with Justin Scott every day, I think since like February or January. Uh, Georgia has made an effort to visit him in Chicago, and I think he just got off his official visit. Um, and then Ohio State is still in the fray. There, there's, I think, pitching on Mozzie Smith's development. I know Justin Scott looks up a lot to Mozzie. Uh, you know, the development from going from a high school recruit to a first round draft pick, that's a lot to do. This, that's going to have a lot of um, uh, framework and a lot of pull, I think. Um, and then, like I said, just um, honing in on being able to play close to home and representing the Midwest and um, being that next guy in line to be that next NFL draft pick and the next elite pass rusher. So again, there's a lot, to do, there's a lot of ground to cover with Miami and Georgia in particular and Notre Dame, but um, we'll see what happens. Um, and then with Ryan Wingo, Again, another guy who hasn't visited since Michigan State game, but wide receivers coach Ron Bellamy is clearly um, going the extra mile to stay actively involved in this recruitment. Um, I know Ryan has a connection with Jane Davis, and the commitment of Jane Davis will surely have um, some effect in how Wingo views Michigan, especially its passing game. Uh, Michigan has – one early enrollee in Frederick Moore, who is very close with Ryan Wingo. In fact, I think they play, I think their high schools were like two miles apart, three miles apart. So I know Frederick Moore, I, I assume will be player host or at least will have a good impact as well. Um, you know, Ron Bellamy has been known for his elite recruiting. So I think, um, you know, if it all ends up well, uh, Michigan could see itself, you know, vaulting up. Um, but yeah, I think it's still, I, I'm, I'm, it's, it's a definite that they're not leading right now, but again, official visits can change everything. So we'll see. Michigan football and hockey put in the chat. There's nine official visitors I actually went to Zach's updated list and there's 13 official visitors for this weekend. So yes, double digit official visitors as of right now. Um, just briefly adding so we can kind of move on to the, the next wave of guys on this official visitors list. I think it's going to be tough to land both Ryan Wingo and Justin Scott. I mean, with Wingo, you see George is the heavy leader. Now the leader has changed quite a few times with Wingo's. It went from like Notre Dame to Tennessee to Georgia, but I'd be surprised if he doesn't end up with Georgia. He has a really good relationship with their quarterback commit Dylan Rayola, who's obviously the number one quarterback um, in the country this cycle. I think it helps Michigan that they have one of the top signal callers committed in Jaden Davis, but I think uh, Wingo's bond with Rayola and just what George's present overall has really impressed him. And then going back to Justin Scott, um, you know, Miami has really taken the lead in that recruitment. They're the favorite on the on three recruiting prediction machine. You know, the NIL Hurricanes are very tough to beat, just like their brothers, the NIL Ducks. So you can never count out Oregon Miami in any high profile recruitment. And I think anytime you have such a high profile recruitment that involves Michigan and Miami or Michigan and Oregon, it usually doesn't go the right way. So the official visit this weekend is really, really, really going to wow. Uh, or have to wow both prospects for Michigan to have any chance. Um, Shane Johnson says, Scott, see Mozzie, Jenkins, and Graham, three and four stars to first round. So Shane Johnson trying to will Justin Scott to Michigan. So we'll see if anything changes coming out of the weekend. And, and I'll add that, you know, I've had plenty of great conversations with Justin Scott and I, I never thought he was an NIL type of guy. I mean, he, he comes from a great program. His head coach is awesome. Um, he's been awesome in interviews. He goes to a high academic high school in the city. Uh, so maybe Michigan can get past the NIL side and show what current players are doing and show them the benefits of, of what it means to be 
a Michigan Wolverine and all the success and development aspect, as Shane Johnson pointed out, but not super optimistic at this point. Um, let's talk about the DBs. There are three high profile defensive backs coming in. Boo Carter, who's set to make his decision this month. Bryce West, Michigan, Ohio State battle there. And Jordan Johnson Rubel, one of my personal favorites from IMG Academy, four star. Originally from Texas, Texas is trending on the on three recruiting prediction machine. All three of these guys are very, very high priorities. Michigan does not lead for any of them on the on three recruiting prediction. Zach, who do you think Michigan has the best shot with out of the three elite defensive backs coming in? This might sound like a hot take considering how much Boo Carter has visited Knoxville since like the last 18 months, but uh, considering the amount of information and intel that's been gathered this past week or two, Michigan, if, if there's any school that can take down Tennessee to Norton, the way Boo Carter, it's Michigan. I mean, Steve Blinkscale has a really good relationship with Boo. Um, he is the top nickel target. Um, Boo has said nothing but great things about Clean Sales honesty, the way he's approached him when going when doing conversations, and really just the realness. Um, I think that's a common trait for Clean Sale, and a kid like Boo uh, really appreciates that. Um, and then there's also the fact that he knows so many kids who are going to Michigan or are very interested in Michigan. For example, um, Jacob Owen, the on 300 defensive back commit. He has known Owen all the way back to their early freshman years from seven on seven events to camps around the country. I mean, both of their year round training organizations um, have a really good working relationship. So they, they interact a ton despite living in separate states. Um, Owen has, has worked behind the scenes really well to make his pitch. I mean, it's, the other commits as well on Twitter. I mean, they go public with it. I think all the Michigan fans can see the amount of times, you know, Luke Hamilton or Ben Roebuck or um, Jordan Marshall, you know, tag Boo Carter and something. And then they say, you know, the move, right? So um, I think that's really giving a lot of, um, a lot of thought for Boo. And I, I think he knows that Michigan would welcome him with open arms and they consider him a top target. And I think his addition would just be so, a valuable just because he can all not only play in the secondary, but in camps and seven on seven, he's shown to be a very dynamic wide out in the slot and even at the X. So he's one to very look out for if, you know, it wouldn't be surprising if Michigan is able to gain more momentum following this weekend. I think Tennessee leads for Boo Carter. You see the prediction machine gives Tennessee a, 92 percent chance of landing him I, I do think it's a little closer than that but uh steve Klingscale is going to have to work some magic this weekend jacob odin who's coming in on an unofficial visit is going to have to help uh from the commit side work some magic as well um i could see michigan landing boot carter but as things stand right now again i'd probably lean towards tennessee now i don't think michigan leads with the guy i'm about to talk about but Man, I Michigan's always great at moving the needle on official visits for guys that seem like Michigan kids. And I know I'm not supposed to cheer for a kid to land at Michigan, but man, I love Jordan Johnson Rubel. He's one of my favorite guys, like I said earlier. He just, I mean, he's a Michigan kid all the way. The first time I met this kid, I was like, this kid's a guy Michigan can pull, uh, even when it looks super unlikely. Like I went out to see him in Florida um, at IMG Academy in the spring, and Michigan was about to be left out of his top schools list before Jay Harbaugh and Steve Klingscale made a big search. Now they're getting him on campus for an official visit. Now they're moving up his list. Like Jay Harbaugh is one of the best recruiters on staff. He's a guy that just knows how to connect with players. Steve Klingscale obviously is one of the best recruiters on staff as well. With both of those guys involved with Jordan Johnson and uh, with his mom coming in for her first ever visit to Michigan, I think there's a chance that Michigan becomes even more of a dark horse with Jordan Johnson and And I'm definitely not guaranteeing that Michigan will land him, but 
but I do think that Michigan's going to move up his list. I think once he gets, I mean, he's been to Michigan in the past, but it was a quick visit. I think once he spends multiple days on campus, I think once Michigan really sits down with his mom and explains the benefits of not only the development side, but the academic side and everything Michigan has to offer as a school and the alumni base, I mean, there is a, a lot to like about Michigan as a school, obviously. So I think that'll impress his mom. And I think Jordan will be impressed with the football aspect. And like I said, just being there for multiple days, I see him as a Michigan kid. I think he'll see himself as a Michigan kid. Texas is going to be tough to overcome. Uh, you know, he's originally from Fort Worth and, you know, that's not too far away from Austin, just about a three and a half, four hour drive. So um, Texas, again, that's, that's going to be tough to, to beat out, but I do feel like Michigan has a prime opportunity on this official visit. Of course, our uh, great friend Chris Ewald confirming that Zaquan Patterson will be on campus June 22nd to 23rd. I believe Chris Ewald Jr. will also be on campus that weekend. And uh, their good friend, DJ Pickett, is coming in soon this month as well. Uh, we do have a super chat from Funky Bunch 3 and he says, what's up with wide receiver Nick Marsh? Uh, Michigan's backyard and not a mention. Reminds me of Amari Snowden last cycle would be a great fit for UM. Um, Zach recently talked to Nick Marsh. There's definitely not anything there. Um, I'll let Zach handle it since he was the last one to talk to Nick. I mean, Penn State is the leader right now. Um, Penn State really has made Detroit and its suburbs a priority ever since Tim Banks was their co-DC or no defensive coordinator. Um, and I think, you know, James Franklin has um, stuck with that region. Um, you know, Nick Marsh has visited Happy Valley before. He's told me personally and other reporters that he loves the campus. And I think it's a, it's a collective recruiting effort from the entire Penn State coaching staff. So um, it just makes sense for him to go to Penn State. I know he, uh, you know, likes the scheme, and I think he knows he can play early. So, um, you know, I, I could see him playing for the Michigan's rival. <laughs> we appreciate you, Funky Bunch 3, for your super chat. Let's go back to Chris Ewald's comment uh, talking about Zaquan coming in. You know, it'll be interesting to see which of the safety targets jumps in. You have the kind of elite guys in Zaquan. Um, you have Jordan Johnson, Rubel, you have Ricardo Jones. I think Michigan's a, a good player for all of them. So we'll see how, you know, all of that pans out. But uh, Jordan Johnson, Rubel, I think someone in the chat is knocking his size a little bit. Look, Jordan is, I, I, would, I would put it like this. I think Ricardo Jones is the most ready to go prospect. I think Zaquan has the most dog in him and is the most physical prospect. Like, I would fear for my life more if Zaquan was about to hit me. And I think Jordan Johnson Rupel um, is the most versatile guy. I wouldn't knock his height because he can play corner, he can play nickel, he can play all over the secondary. So that's how I would kind of describe the three safeties at the top. And then you also have Nigel Maynard, who uh, is coming in for an OV on June 23rd, who the staff really, really likes more than his ranking really quick. Let's, let's keep the show moving because we are over time, but we know, understand it's a massive weekend. So we want to close out with a few. Um, neither of us mentioned Bryce West. I have a pick in for Ohio state, Zach, any chance for Michigan to overcome that very large Ohio state lead? I don't put in picks for other schools, but if I was, it'd be Ohio state. Well, there you go. All right, let's go down to Guys that we all have, or either me or you or both of us have picks for. I'm going to list them off. Elias Rudolph, four-star edge. Amarion Stewart, four-star wide receiver. Dominic Nichols, four-star edge. Owen Wafel, three-star defensive lineman. David Pale Pale, three-star defensive lineman. You have been the lead on Elias Rudolph, Zach. Give us your thoughts with him coming in this weekend and still having an Ohio State official visit left. Yeah, so this is a true Cincinnati kid, even though he's from, he goes to school at Deerfield Beach. Like he is born and raised 
in Cincinnati and, you know, Michigan has a shot to land arguably the top edge rushers in that state of Ohio and Rudolph and Robinson. And considering that I live so close to Ohio, that would be a pipe dream. But um, yeah, with Rudolph, he visited in January um, before transferring. He went up there with his former school in Taft. Um, he spent all, I think he spent a junior day there with some of his teammates and his former head coach. And I really, the consensus um, that I've been getting is Number one, Elias cares a lot about education. Um, his inner circle cares a lot about education. And the, the priority is getting a degree from a school like Michigan with football included, right? Um, the, the, that deg- the, the, bes- the message has been like, you're going to get a Michigan degree and that'll carry with you for the rest of your life. And that's weighed a lot positively for a kid like Rudolph. Um, He is scheduled to go to Michigan this upcoming weekend. Um, Communication with Steve Klingsdale's primary recruiter has not faltered since he moved down to Florida. Um, He's also had great relationships with pass rush specialist Dylan Roney, defense coordinator Jesse Minter, and defensive line coach Mike Elston. He is – they have called him a freak. Like, if you see him like in person – about six, five, 200, like a little over 200 pounds, no fat, just raw motor. Um, he, he understands what it takes to get developed by a school like Michigan. He's seen guys like Aiden Hutchinson, David Ojabo, um, Mike Morris, um, go to the NFL, um, and hopefully have a good career. And that's something he wants to do. Obviously there's two current commits in Cincinnati in the 24 class with, Ted Hammond and Jordan Marshall, he knows them. Um, 23 class has two signees from Cincinnati with Cam Calhoun and Breon Ishmael. And Elias knows all of of them. And I know they've all made an effort to spread the word. Um, I know he has Ohio State on the 23rd. I think he was just at Pitt last weekend. And he's going to go to Miami this weekend. I mean, the following weekend. Um, but I'm very confident that with the amount of edge rushers that they're going to get, um, Elias should be one of them. And he would be a very intriguing developmental piece, considering that he can get, he has the frame to gain more weight. So he should be an exciting addition. Um, yeah, I, I, if they are able to land Elias and Robinson, um, two guys in their own backyard, uh, not only will that up the 24 class commits from Ohio, but it's just guys who understand the traditions, the history and guys who have immense work ethic. Like, you know, even if they, I know we both, I think everyone notices just like, for example, like Brian, like the work ethic that these kids from Ohio have blue collar lunch pail, you know, all the cliches. Um, But yeah, I, I'm very confident in my prediction for Michigan and um, regardless of, what Ohio state tries to do. I would say uh, with better talent than the usual lunch pail guys, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good, I like that cliche. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will briefly uh, again, we have gone over time, so I don't want to keep our producer here forever. So I will briefly hit on the other four that I feel like Michigan has a lead on and start off with a Marion Stewart commitment date set for June 16th. He just announced that on his Instagram today, Michigan has been the leader there for a long time. Wisconsin did host him for an official visit over the weekend. Uh, but I really like where the Wolverines stand. He was originally set to make an OV on June 23rd, uh, is now making his OV this weekend. And uh, I think if everything goes well on the OV, you'll see Marion put on a Michigan hat on June 16th. But Wisconsin did give him, you know, some things to think about. I, I think Wisconsin's always been a school he's really liked. So we'll see how that plays out. Next guy, Dominic Nichols, four-star edge out of Igemsville, Oakdale. Um, I've put in a prediction, or I put in a prediction for him about a month and a half ago. Um, basically told me Michigan was his leader since then he has attracted some more interest Clemson's ramped up the heat Georgia has uh ramped up the heat a little bit so he has some bigger schools that are up there he just made an official visit to Wisconsin as well 
but I really like where Michigan stands. He's another guy that just kind of fits that Michigan mold. Um, he is like Brian, uh, Brian Robinson a bit in the sense that he is a lower ceiling, but really high floor type of kid. I also just like Nichols's frame. I think unlike Brian Robinson, he's a guy that could also play some four eye if needed. He can be that bigger edge guy like a Mike Morris. Uh, there's a lot to like about Dominic. Nichols. He's really added some good weight. Uh, I think he's listed here at 240. He's definitely heavier than that right now. So yeah, a lot to like about Nichols, a lot to like where Michigan stands. I think they can potentially seal the deal this weekend. Uh, next guy up is three-star defensive lineman Owen Waffle. And if you have been saying Waffle, you have not been saying it correctly. Uh, former Notre Dame commit, Michigan obviously made a huge push. He backed out of his verbal pledge to the Irish. No set date right now as far as a commitment. But I think if Michigan knocks it out of the park on this OV, you could just see him shut it down. Um, shortly after leaving campus or while on campus. I definitely wouldn't be surprised if that happens. So I feel very, very confident in my prediction for Owen Wafel going into the visit. Uh, next guy up is David Pale Pale, three-star defensive lineman out of Pennsylvania, who obviously I've seen multiple uh, times. If you follow us on the Wolverine, I'm always out there saying Pale Pale. Love this kid as well, man. He fits the Michigan mold all the way. I have a prediction in. He told me on the record that Michigan leads. He did make an official visit to Penn State last weekend. The Nittany Lions pushed hard to keep him closer to home around his family. But uh, I think Michigan just is a better fit from a scheme standpoint. Uh, from a culture standpoint, it just seems like Polly Polly really vibes well with the Michigan staff and the Michigan program. So I feel really good about my prediction there. He does not have a set decision date, but much like Wayful, I think that a decision could come potentially, you know, shortly after the visit. So uh, the Wolverines trending great with all four of those guys, plus Rudolph, who Libby hit on. And we will finish up the show uh, very quickly, Zach, um, you'll hit on one guy and I'll hit on one guy. There's two official visitors we haven't talked about. One is Micah Ka'apana um, out of Las Vegas powerhouse, Bishop Gorman, three-star running back. Taylor Tatum starting to trend towards USC. Do you think Michigan will get Ka'apana? I think they're in a position to do so because the resources that Michigan can provide a kid like Micah, it, 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 it can't be compared anywhere else. I mean, their relationship between him and Mike Hart has grown exponentially this spring since uh, Micah picked up the offer a little bit ago during the spring eval period. Um, you know, he's, he, he told me once that he, he tells all his teammates about like Blake Corum and David Edwards, like that one-two punch. And he says, he I'm sure it annoys his teammates, but I think he's one that's really grown a lot of fandom for Michigan. Someone that um, a, like really revels in the fact that a school that runs the ball so much has this much interest in him and wants him to get on an official visit. Uh, Jordan Marshall has talked to him over the phone in the past. And I know Micah has taught, has said that, that potential one, two tandem is, could be special. Um, you know, Mike is someone who, uh, had about a thousand and I think he had a thousand and one yards last year on like 77 carries. Right. So he's one that doesn't have a lot of mileage. He's not really banged up. Um, very, uh, fresh legs. Um, he would come in healthy. Um, he would come in ready to work to prove that he deserves time on the field. Um, I think already having that chemistry with someone like Jordan Marshall, who's been an active player recruiter, is going to help a lot. Um, but yeah, he's the first one of four to officially visit and um, to find that perfect pairing with Jordan. I think they'll be done for quickly um, if they decide to go that route. So um, yeah, I think Mike is very a, a formidable option. I think more people are getting excited. Um, just based on watching his film and really seeing the positivity that he's showing in uh, interviews um, with, you know, any media outlet. Um, last guy we need to hit on is Michigan commit Manuel Beagle. Um, the Beagle is a very valued member of the class who has recently picked up offers from 
Texas A&M, uh, Georgia jumped in the mix as well. Penn State uh, recently went out to Connecticut to see Manuel. He's completely locked in. I think this official visit will kind of serve as more reassurance for Manuel. Um, he has a special bond with Michigan defensive line coach Mike Alston. So don't think there's any reason to worry with Beagle heading into the visit. He is firm in his commitment. We need to get him a profile picture. <laughs> but Beagle is uh, a guy that's one of the more undervalued prospects in the class. He's a three-star across the board, which is no surprise since he's an international prospect. But again, his recruitment's blown up a little bit. I really like how he's progressed this offseason. So Michigan doing everything they can to keep him on board. And again, I really have no reason to be concerned. All right, guys, thanks for joining us for the Tuesday Recruiting Show. I will be back tomorrow here on our YouTube channel. Make sure to like this video and subscribe and join me for the Wednesday Recruiting Chat where I will be answering all your questions. <laughs>